What up, this is Bobby Garcia, aka Cool Bob Love, DJ, author, ball player, filmmaker, TV personality, radio personality, uh, sneaker designer, photographer, actor, voiceover agent, uh, do a lot of things, coach, announcer, tournament director, basketball activist, but shout out to backpackers.fr, what up? Um, well, uh, it's hard to say because I predate hip hop. I'm born in 1966, and um, in the 70s, we didn't identify the movement as hip hop, which is, we lived on a day-to-day -day basis, experiences that, you know, were later on in retrospect, oh, yeah, that was hip hop, you know? Um, but I guess, uh, it's hard to say because you know records that were special to me in my childhood. Again, they weren't they weren't hip hop records. They were they were funk records or jazz records or dance records that years later what became like b boy anthems. You know, um, so I feel fortunate in that uh, you know I've, I've been able to see hip hop emerge and grow and become this global force. Alright, alright, I'm gonna set it off like this. Check it out. Yo, check it. Yo, I got slugs for snitches. Got slugs for well, snitches. Well, uh, no myself and Sasha Armstrong are actually uh, co producing a documentary about our, our radio show's impact in the 1990s. How we introduced the world to an unsigned Nas, Biggie, Wu Tang, Big Pond, Ma Beef. How we showcased Eminem and Jay Z before the album was dropped. How we created a platform for Emma Doom page and company flows, um, but I don't want to talk about that because I'd rather save that for the documentary when it comes out, And um, but for anybody interested in following our production, you can go to stretchingbobbito.com and uh, from that website you can see our Twitter, our Instagram, our Tumblr, our Facebook and you can see like who we're interviewing and you know our journey in making the film. Uh -huh. Well, um, that's interesting that you asked me because I, uh, I spent an entire decade being what you could term me a hip hop activist and that, you know, I was involved with Rocksteady Crew helping produce uh, anniversary events that were free for the public. Um, I had a store, footwork, uh, that was like a, like an epicenter, if you will, for hip hop culture. Um, I had a, uh, a record label. Um, I used to host unsigned uh, artist showcases at, at New Weekend Cafe, Post Cafe, and TV. I did the radio show with Stretch. Um, I was writing for Rap Ages. The Vibe magazine, the source. So I had my hand in every single thing that you could possibly imagine to support hip hop culture uh, in the 90s. Um, but that's not me in 2014. Um, uh, I mean, I still, of course, you know, hip hop till I die. Um, but you can come hear me DJ tonight, and I'm, you may not hear one rap record. My advice, though, would be to not complain and instead act. If you feel that your city is lacking in an area, then create the space, see what's missing, and fill the void. Check it, check, check it out now. Hey, yo, what brothers can beg and borrow, still feel sorrow with Jay. Well, I, you know, let me state that I'm not anti-digital, but I am pro analog. So I've had three different labels. Uh, the first one was Bondalum, which I started in 1990. I used to start it in 94, 95. I have a, a weekly radio show on eastvillageradio.com. Um, and 
You know, it's broadcast digitally around the world, and it's kind of nice that they archive every show so that, you know, anyone have listeners in Shanghai, have listeners in London, Bali, and, you know, Accra, and kind of, and they can listen to every single show as many times as they want, and they don't miss a beat, you know, whereas, uh, back in the day, you know, a lot of things were undocumented, and that made it special for the people who got to experience it live. Um, so, yeah, I think there's some cool, cool things with SoundCloud and with digital, and there's, I think the downfall of it is that it's too accessible, right? So that uh, there's no, like, filter or mentoring for people to share their music. So your music can suck, and you can just go put it on SoundCloud or put it on, you know, your YouTube channel or whatever. And sometimes people need some leadership. I mean, if you look at, if you look at education, I mean, when you're 14 years old, you can go to the library and be self-taught like Nas and like KRS. But for the most part, you need a teacher, you need a mentor, you need a leader to, to say, hey, read these books, you know, expand your mind, expand, you need an example. And I think uh, hip hop has lost some of that uh, in the digital era. If you read my book, Where'd You Get Those New York City Sneaker Culture 1960-1987, it's a long title, I apologize. I just released the 10th anniversary edition. Um, and in the afterword, which is new, I added 16 pages, I talked about how I wanted to be a, a writer as a kid. I just didn't, I didn't master English. So I never had confidence uh, as an adult early on and then when I started being afforded the opportunity to write and share my thoughts about hip hop initially and then eventually basketball as well. I, I wrote for Slam Magazine. I started my own publication called Bounce. I wrote the book on sneaker culture, doing the part pickup basketball. And I see I'm the writer on that documentary. I'm writing the, doc the, the, the documentary of me and Stretch. Um, so I've had the opportunity to, to, to write in many different forms. And um, it's a beautiful thing, you know, I've had moments where people have told me that they've taped my article to their wall, you know, they've memorized my columns. Uh, and when you realize the impact that writing has, it's pretty powerful. There's a film, SetchinBobito.com for information. Uh, I have the record release of my own, Bobby Garcia, he's Walala. The, so the song title is Park Picker Player. Um, that'll come out um, this spring. And, um, and I have some apparel collaborations coming up. Pata, P A T C A in Amsterdam. It's a clothing line and, and a shop. And uh, we're doing some, going to do some t shirts together. Yeah, it's was collaborative design effort. So, um, and uh, I have a sneaker collab and a shoe collab coming out to 2015 as well. But I don't have it. I can't, I can't say it yet. Shit, what's going on? Check it out. Organized for the 9 3 you know what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. I mean, the main goal is to, is to maintain. There's a song by, uh, by Organized Confusion on his second album in 1994 uh, called Maintain. It's a very hard thing to do to uh, keep a standard of excellence for yourself and meet the expectation of the audience. Um, and it's also a very hard thing to do is, is to transform. I've been relevant now in four different decades. And, um, you know, in different areas. And they all, to me, all, they're all related somehow. But, um, you know, I just, I, I work very hard, and um, I think uh, I've been blessed to, to stay relevant and continue to put challenges in front. So now I'm in the chop shop creating masterpieces. So it don't matter money what my funny label releases. This is thanks to the streets and my peeps that made me in the la 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 Yeah.
Hey.